why is your poop brown, your bruise is sometimes green, and why do babies come out of the womb looking yellow? Well, you didn't come to this video to answer those questions, but we will answer those questions when we talk about red blood cells being recycled. Hey everybody, Organized Biology here where we make difficult biology concepts simple. And we're gonna start today with a worn out red blood cell. And this is going to be like a broken down car. So I need to make up like a car brand that maybe breaks down really easily. Um, I'll, use, I'll just use the term like Chevy, okay? So this is the Chevy cell. And when these blood cells are worn out, they need to be recycled just like any car. So we're gonna take it to the junkyard called the spleen. And at the junkyard of the spleen, we're going to take some of the parts of the red blood cell that are good and reuse them, whereas take the, some of the bad stuff and actually just get them out, just like any regular car at the junkyard. Now the cell that's gonna act like the junkyard is called a macrophage in the spleen, and it is going to bring in parts of the broken down red blood cell called hemoglobin, which literally built the red blood cell in the first place. And these will enter a little organelle inside the macrophage called a lysosome. Think of this as kind of the stomach of the macrophage. It's literally digesting these hemoglobin molecules apart because digest means to break apart. Now you have to think, well, if we're digesting a hemoglobin, what actually is the hemoglobin? Well, the globin aspect is actually a protein. And so if it's a protein, it's made of long chains of amino acids. So when it goes in and gets digested by the lysosome, we're actually going to produce a bunch of free amino acids. Those build every protein in your body. And so what the macrophage does is it breaks those things down from the globin aspect and it actually tosses it back into the bloodstream. So now these amino acids will go in the bloodstream, go everywhere to every cell of the body and help those cells rebuild themselves because cells are made from proteins. So that's a great way to recycle the amino acids from the hemoglobin. Now the hemo section of this protein is a little different and it'll take further processing. So I'm going to draw the heme group down here. So here's the heme group that couldn't be digested by the lysosome. So we need further help to break this sucker down. And as you notice, look inside the heme group. We've got an iron atom right here. So the car analogy for this works really well because this is like a metal. This is like scrap metal. And we can use that scrap metal to rebuild black, the <laughs> rebuild back the red blood cells. So we need to be able to get the iron out of this heme group. We'll enter an enzyme called heme oxygenase. Fun fact, anytime you see ace at the end of a word by itself, so like lipase, protease, oxygenase, it means it's an enzyme that's actually going to act as little scissors. And heme oxygenase inside macrophage is going to cut that little bond and release that iron into the bloodstream. Since we did that, now the iron is actually charged so it can dissolve well in fluid of the blood, and that will actually go all the way throughout circulation but find its way into the bone marrow. Now, why are we going specifically into the bone marrow of the vertebrae as well as like the hip? Because in these bones, there is what's called red bone marrow. And this location is where we actually build your red blood cells. So we take the scrap metal from the broken down red blood cells and we're tossing it back here to actually produce new red blood cells that are perfectly shaped for their function. So it's like we took a broken down car and we actually used the scrap metal to make a brand new one. So Chevys aren't that bad, right? <laughs> However, there's an extra problem that we have here. Although we just recycled the amino acids and the iron, there's this troublesome molecule here now separated from the iron. And he by himself is called Billy Verdon. And I like to think of two things with Billy Verdon. Number one, it kind of sounds like vermin, like we want to get rid of the vermin, right? And secondly, that verd kind of sounds like verde. Like salsa verde, it's green. <laughs> if anybody likes salsa verde, you get me. So remember, Billy Verdon is kind of this green color. And that's actually what is produced whenever your bruises are turning green because we're recycling the red blood cells that got leaked out. And now we're recycling them into uh, Billy Verdon. However, like I said, we need to get rid of this. It's a vermin, right? So what will happen is there will be another enzyme this macrophage will have called biliverdin reductase. And that will transform the biliverdin into a molecule called bilirubin. Now I'm drawing this in orange because I don't have a yellow marker, but in reality, this bilirubin would give a little yellow pigment which is again why your bruises turn a little yellow, and we're gonna explain the little baby coming out yellow thing here in a second. So just like everything else, once bilirubin is produced, it's going to get tossed into the bloodstream. But here's where another problem ensues. Bilirubin is actually hydrophobic. 
Now, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, hydrophobic basically means it doesn't like to dissolve in water. And since the blood is made of mostly water, that is a problem. And so we need to use a helpful little carrier protein inside the blood to help carry this bilirubin around. That helpful carrier protein is called albumin. So albumin is well dissolved in the blood and it's called a carrier protein because it can actually carry hydrophobic things in the blood as if they are dissolved themselves. To learn more about it, you can learn more about blood right here. But we're gonna follow now. We've got this albumin carrying the bilirubin and it's going to actually circulate throughout the body and eventually end up into the liver. Now, if you know anything about the liver, it likes to uh, metabolize things, break things down and get them out of the body if they need to be out or actually reintroduce them to the body if they need to stay in. But in this case, we want to get bilirubin out. We can't really use it for anything. So the liver cells are going to try to process this bilirubin out. So the way they do that is through the following. So now you see the bilirubin entering a liver cell called a hepatocyte, literally translating to liver cell. Now I want you to think, what was the problem with bilirubin in the first place? It couldn't dissolve in water, right? And in order to excrete things out, usually we like to have them dissolved in fluid. So we need to turn this bilirubin into something that can dissolve well. So here's what we're going to do. Inside of the hepatocyte, there's going to be a molecule called glucuronic acid. And I want you to remember that we are going to glue the glucuronic acid to the bilirubin. And I'm drawing this in blue because it's actually going to allow the bilirubin to now dissolve in water. And we call this entire molecule now conjugated bilirubin. Great. Now this is catalyzed by an enzyme that I am not going to say, but I'm going to write it out below because it's such a long word I would probably stumble over it mightily. But we do shorten that enzyme up as UDPGT, otherwise known as UDPGT. <laughs> so, okay, we've now got conjugated bilirubin. It dissolves well in water. So what the liver will now do is take that and secrete it into the small intestine, interestingly enough. And this conjugated bilirubin is actually inside the secretion of the liver called bile. So you can kind of remember bilirubin is in bile, right? Now, we're going to follow that conjugated bilirubin all the way through the small intestine. It's going to stay in here and then get to the large intestine. But here's where something interesting happens. Inside the large intestine, there are a bunch of bacteria. In fact, there are 100 trillion bacteria living inside of your large intestine right now, which is more cells than you have. Crazy, right? And these bacteria are going to convert that conjugated bilirubin into a bunch of different uh, products. And what's interesting is when it does that, it gives off a new pigment. And as you can see, the converted forms of conjugated bilirubin are brown, which explains why your poo comes out in a very brown chunk. That is a terrible word to describe that. I apologize. <laughs> now, I've got one more thing to teach you, but if this has been helpful so far, I would highly recommend liking this video and subscribing to the channel. I have a lot more videos like this. We're making difficult concepts very easy. So we've excreted the bad stuff, we recycled the good stuff, but some of this unconjugated bilirubin doesn't always get into the hepatocytes. In fact, some of it can actually get past the liver circulation and continue to stay in the blood. Now, there's been some studies that show that this can actually go into the kidneys and actually get excreted out as urine, which could explain why the urine has that yellowish color to it. But there's some evidence that it has to be further converted before it can actually get peed out as urine, because remember, it's hydrophobic. It doesn't like to get peed out in water, right? But the second thing I want to point out is if this bilirubin stays in the blood, it will turn your blood yellow which we call jaundice. And this is why it's very common for babies to be yellow. They have a lot of bilirubin in the blood. But the question is, why babies? Why not anybody else? Well, in babies, their livers are highly underdeveloped. And that means they can't process out as much of this bilirubin as they need to. In fact, they're breaking down more red blood cells than they can actually excrete out the byproducts of bilirubin. Now, usually they're only jaundiced for a couple of weeks. 
if even that long, because their liver starts to catch up, starts to excrete out all of this stuff, and the jaundice will likely go away. Now, to learn more about the blood, I recommend hopping over here or by watching this video that the YouTube algorithm is pushing to you.